Earlier today, we got the official reveal of Valorant, previously known as Project A. This is Riot Games' brand new competitive 5v5 character-based tactical shooter. The game is all about precise, highly lethal gunplay with a splash of hero abilities. A reductive way to look at it is it's basically like you took Counter-Strike and then added abilities from games like Rainbow Six Siege, Overwatch, and TF2. That essentially is what Valorant is. Now, they're also really focused on this high-level competitive play. They're going to have 128 tick rate servers, 60 to 144 FPS on modern gaming rigs, and they're also aiming for under 35 MS latency for players in major cities around the world. Riot is really taking a, a pretty good shot, no pun intended, at joining in the FPS competitive market, and clearly they're also aiming for this game to be a competitive esport. So I want to go over the basic fundamentals of what Valorant is. Let's get into it. So the main the main game mode in this game is just like CSGO's Diffuse. Matches are done in this best of 24 format with the first to 13 winning with an attacking and defending team. The matches start off with a buy phase where you purchase abilities and weapons, and then the attacking team gets the spike that they try to plant in one of three sites. The attackers win if the spike is planted and explodes, and the defenders must try to defuse it. So each player will have one life per round. You can also win by eliminating all enemy players, although the defending team will still have to defuse the spike if it was planted. If you happen to survive, you'll take your loadout into the next round, otherwise you'll have to rebuy weapons and abilities. One of the major features of this game is that it features hero classes called agents that will have these unique magical abilities. Although the gunplay is the core of the game, agent abilities will also be very important. Between the actual gameplay and just how things are structured, there's a pretty clear comparison to Counter-Strike with what Valorant is presenting in terms of its gameplay. I think that's okay because they, again, are trying to have their own spin with these agents. So let's talk a bit about what agents are. Again, these are essentially the hero classes in this game. At the start of the match, you'll pick an agent and you won't have the option to swap. You'll have to stick with the one that you choose. Each agent in the game will have four abilities. There's a signature skill that you get for free every round, two single-use abilities that you'll have to purchase, and one ultimate that charges by getting kills. Abilities in this game are designed to complement gunplay through tactical information and strategic support. They're more used to create opportunities for players to get in a good situation and set up a shot. Some of the abilities include things like a blink, a smoke screen, drones, healing, fire, and poison abilities. At the moment, we know about eight of the agents in the game, although there will be more to come, and I want to give you a basic rundown here. So first, there's Phoenix, an aggressive character who excels at rushing into combat and using his fire ability abilities to push other players around. Jet is an agile soldier who's all about outflanking enemies and taking them out quick with precise ambushes. Viper, who loves the smell of his own noxious gas using these poison-based abilities. Sova, the resident bow and arrow guy with abilities to track enemy movement. Cypher is all about spying on your enemies, an expert alluring people into deadly traps and revealing their movements. There's Brimstone, brings death from above with a range of orbital weaponry that bombards the map, creating smoke screens or damaging enemies. Sage is Valorant's resident medic, able to revive down allies or impair enemy movements. And then finally, we know of Omen, who likes to play mind games by teleporting around the map, striking and blinding enemies. So those are the eight characters that we know of at the moment, and there is already out there a full list of all of their abilities. Again, their signature, the two additional ones, and then the ultimate. I, d I didn't want to sit here and read all of the four abilities for each of the eight heroes in this game without actually being able to show all of them because we don't have gameplay for everything. I just didn't think it made a lot of sense with this particular video, but it's out there if you want to know that, that kind of fine detailed information. So a couple of other notable things about Valorant that we figured out at the moment. Maps in the game appear to be incredibly similar to Counter-Strike. There will be spawn locations for both teams, several bomb sites, strategic positions, angles, and call-out locations. And again, from the gameplay that we've seen, it also appears to play pretty similar to Counter-Strike in terms of just the general tempo of the matches, except instead of using smoke and flash and molotovs and stuff like that, you're using your agent abilities. The game will have skins. Uh, at the moment, we know that they're going to be gun skins, although they have said no loot boxes. Skins will be direct purchases. And there's also going to be a battle pass, although at the moment, it doesn't appear like there's a lot of details about that, uh, how that's going to work. But, you know, we kind of all know what battle passes are like. You'll progress through it by 
by gaining XP, by completing matches, and then you'll unlock skins and emotes and stuff probably. And then finally, the, the last thing you should know is that the game is going to be free to play and it is set to launch in summer of 2020. So we're not too far away and there's going to be a closed beta happening sometime between now and then, although specifics are a bit fuzzy. I've heard rumors that the beta might actually be starting like in the next couple of weeks. So it could be very, very soon. And I'm assuming they'll go from closed beta to open beta, or maybe they just go from closed beta to full launch since again, it is a free to play game. So we'll have to see. Got an interesting quote here as well. If you're worried about the inclusion of like hero abilities in the, what's supposed to be this tactical competitive shooter, um, I think they're well aware of trying to not go over the top with this. So a quote here that I have says that by adding unique character abilities that complement the game's gunplay, we believe we're expanding upon the traditional tactical shooter experience and bringing something new to the genre. And we hope the launch of Valorant will be the start of a long-term relationship with tactical FPS fans from around the world. Time and time again, as I was uh, learning more about this game, it seemed pretty obvious that the abilities are, are really meant to be more supplemental and not like the major focus. The major focus of this game is going to be the gunplay, the shooting and positioning. The abilities will just be there to assist you in impeding the opposition or setting yourself up to be in a good position. So what do I think about Valorant so far from all the gameplay that we've seen, the discussion? I think it looks good. Like a gameplay from what we've seen looks really, really fluid. It seems to be a solid tactical shooter with a fast kill time. And then again, the ability to use these skills to set up shots or impede your enemies. Visually, it's got a pretty simple, clean look. I have seen actually quite a few complaints about this. People saying that it doesn't look distinctive enough or it looks kind of bland and flat. I understand that critique, but I also think, again, this clean look isn't a bad thing. Well, uh, some of the bigger complaints have been really centered around these wall abilities, like a lot of the smoke screens or walls that cr are created. They're very much so in your face, and it's like this massive solid block, basically, in the center of the screen whenever someone cast it. I think something else that's important to keep in mind is that the abilities are going to be fairly limited in use. It's not going to be like an Overwatch match where you're going to be seeing abilities constantly spammed over and over again. The signature skills, I'm not sure how frequently those can be used. From what I have seen, the additional abilities are going to be you use it once and then that's it. So abilities, again, complementary, meant to supplement, but not the main focus. It really is all about precision aiming and getting the shots with this really fast time to kill. When I see some gameplay and, and when I first saw screenshots of this game, I was like, okay, it looks like CSGO, but with a pop of color, but not too much. It's, it is kind of on the flatter end. They really kind of turn down the saturation uh, with, with the color scheme in this game. And then also uh, something to keep in mind is that with the visual style that they've gone with, it's going to clearly run on a lot of systems. And that's a major selling point. I mean, part of the reason that League of Legends is so successful is that you can run that game on a toaster. And a lot of big popular games out there work as well as they do and get the audiences they do because they can run on a lot of systems. So kind of going not too cutting edge is, uh, I don't think much of a surprise here. Is this game going to be successful? Will it be big? We're just uh, hypothesizing at this point, but I think it's safe to say that it will most certainly have an absolutely massive launch. It's free to play. Overall, it looks like a pretty well put together game. It looks fairly polished. Plus there's the fact that it's being made by Riot. So they're going to be pulling in a lot of that League of Legends fan base, or at least they'll be aware of the game. And I think that those three things are going to get a ton of people in the door. I mean, already I'm seeing a lot of hype from people in the CSGO and Overwatch community, or just from esports backgrounds in general. There seem to be a lot of people really excited about what we've seen uh, of this game so far. Now, how is it going to look three months in? We don't know. I mean, there have been games from big companies that everyone thought was going to be successful that pretty much flopped after the first month. And that could certainly happen here. It's possible. But I think all signs are pointing to this game at the very least being moderately successful. They would really have to drop the ball with something here for it to not harness its own bit of a, a fan base. And then I think one of the final things I want to touch on here is I've been seeing a complaints popping up online, like social media and stuff. Oh, who knew? People complaining online. I've been seeing 
these complaints about people like already announcing that they're going pro or the, the fact that there's already like dedicated YouTubers and streamers for this game. But it's not much of a surprise because frankly, like if you want to propel a career in the gaming industry, whether you're on YouTube or Twitch or whether you're like an esports commentator or esports player, you get in early and that really helps because as this game gets closer and closer to launch and more people are talking about it and searching for it on the internet, if you get in early, you kind of ride that tidal wave of popularity and people interested in learning more about the game. So I'm not surprised because it does look like this is a fairly safe bet. If we have to pick uh, an upcoming game in 2020 to put all of our eggs in and decide this is the game that I'm going to try to hinge uh, my growth on, it seems like Valorant would be a, a, pr a, a pretty safe, you know, I think the odds are pretty good that you will see some success if you dedicate yourself to this game because there's a pretty good chance that it will be a popular game. We can't tell the future. Who knows what exactly is going to happen. But if I were a betting man and I were trying to start a career in YouTube or on Twitch, I, I would say it's a safe bet that if you were to focus on Valorant to try to grow a YouTube or Twitch channel or to try to get into esports, this will at least carry you for probably a couple years. I don't think I'm going to get into that position like I have with games in the past, you know, like I was covering nothing but Overwatch and Starcraft and Diablo and several other games over the past 10 years. I don't think I'm going to ever, ever go back to that kind of channel. I think I'm just going to keep focusing on talking about a wide variety of things and things that interest me. Although I will say, the temptation is certainly there to jump on the hype train because there is a good chance that Valorant ends up being really good. I think regardless, I'm definitely going to follow the course of development of this game. I am definitely going to play it and you'll see some YouTube videos from me. So if you like my videos, maybe you do subscribe. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? All right. Well, that is it. That is what we know about Valorant so far. Uh, hopefully that gives you guys a good overview of what this game is going to be. And yeah, it'll probably be good. It'll probably be pretty successful. Um, it signs is all signs are pointing to yes so far anyways. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Take it easy. I look crazy, don't I? Yeah, okay. Probably because I am.